welcome back today we will take some more uh, tool which is related to physical method and it is going to uh, these all tools are going to assess the possible injury and risk uh, in the workplace so there are there will be sets of tools so mostly we will be talking about snooks table uh, which is related to manual material handling and uh, going to give you a kind of guideline uh, if somebody is working at a place workplace and handling any material then what is the kind of weight limit they should have near lifting equation already we studied there we had lot of calculation but from this snooks table we have some pre computed uh, table and then we can have some kind of idea or guideline if there is a load handling that what should be the possible load which need to be uh, you know uh, given to the worker then we will be talking about lumbar motion method it's an instrument through which if somebody is uh, working with the with your back movement back uh, no back kinetics torso kinetics we will be getting varieties of information so how the torso is act on uh, while you know doing any uh, you know in a load lifting or pushing pulling or movement or any other thing we will be getting lot of kinetics data then all we were going to uh, talk about okra harm uh, art and mapo okay all these methods are used to predict so uh, these methods these uh, these are the tools which are, uh, are going to uh, use for the uh, prediction what is the prediction what we are going to predict over here we are going to predict the risk of probability uh, potentially acute injury specifically we will be talking over here the back injuries so whatever tools we are talking mostly we will be talking about uh, back but not all are back few are some others also but all are predictive method so the set uh, safe limit uh, on work or predict how changes in a job will impact the level of safety okay that we are going to do over here so let us start with the very first tool that is the snook table and it is going to assess the uh, no trunk injury or back injury risk so if in a workplace there is a risk or uh, there is an hazardous issues so what are the cause, causal factors or how can we assess those risk in the workplace at the workplace so it's an hazard analysis tool it is developed by professor s h snook and v m sirelio at liberty mutual insurance company because you know these are uh, this is very important liberty mutual okay so uh, long back whenever um, in the western countries there is always a policy that health uh, need to be maintained or monitored or need to be taken care by the employer and uh, liberty mutual insurance company ha um, uh, normally is associated with all such activities so any health related uh, issues like specifically uh, back pain neck pain uh, any body pain they take care and they, they also take care of the absenteeism data while handling such data they understood definitely the load handling is associated with the trunk injury from that particular observation they developed these particular tool and wh which is uh, like you know earlier days when you know uh, manual handling was majorly dominating task in the uh, in the industry those days this table was very very popular and they uh, re need to follow this rule whatever is given in this table to conduct any kind of manual activity so it is applied to manual handling tasks as i mentioned all earlier to develop recommendation for use in reducing industrial low back compensation claims so here i mention as it is an insurance company so if the employer is not 
following the rules given by the Liberty Mutual, they are not going to give any kind of medical insurance to that but for that particular case. So, uh, while handling the manual material uh, job like you know the load handling, so they have to follow these rules, these guidelines. If still there is a uh, no health uh, issues or health uh, problem specifically back problem, then Liberty Mutual is responsible to go for that compensation. So, how you can reduce the back related injuries? and any medical compensation uh, of, uh, in any organization uh, for uh, to, to do that this particular tool was developed. So, the workers are given one of the task variable the weight of the object being handled. So, all other variables like repetition rate, size, height, distance are all control only the weight of the uh, product or weight of the um, uh, that object is variable in nature. The workers are then monitored his or her own feelings of exertion of fatigue. So, while developing this particular tool they have uh, they, they have gone through this particular process. So, uh, repetition rate, size, height, distance these were controlled only load amount was uh, you know un under uh, like you know uh, maybe 10 kg, 14 kg, 15 kg. So, load amount was invariable in nature and while handling such load they, the workers were asked that or workers were asked to monitor their feeling of exertion ok feeling of exertion of fatigue ok from there they try to understand what is the kind of severity of this particular job. It is believed that the only the individual workers can sense the various strains associated with the manual task of course right. So, this uh, the understanding of load handling is only can be done by the that particular operator you from the outside you really cannot understand what is the kind of strain is getting generated right. So, integrate the sensory inputs into one meaningful responses that was also part of the development process. So, these tables uh, it is a snooks tables, it is a sets of tables right. So, these tables are based on controlled experiment using psychophysical evaluation. So, they are asking about the load handling. Uh, so, varieties of load along with getting uh, all the responses physical uh, and uh, you know uh, perception. So, those responses that is why it is psychophysical evaluation. So, understanding are you exerted uh, if you are exerted at what level? Are you feeling this is a strenuous job? If strenuous at what level? So, these varieties of questions were there definitely not exactly what I quoted now, but these are the say, types of say, uh, questions where they are while conducting this type, this particular experiment and it is a long experiment ok. It, 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 this particular all these tables the, what you will see in my next slides uh, took lot of time to get this value and to develop this particular uh, set. These tables can be used to find the percent of an industrial population capable of sustaining this particular effort either for lifting or lowering or pushing or pulling or carrying. So, for each component these 5 component you will have separate table ok. So, slowly we will take one by one. So, what is the procedure? First use the type of task you have to choose which task you are going to do and the gender of the workers here it is very important. For female you have separate Data, data set you for male you have separate data set. So, first you need to understand what task you are going to analyze and which gender is going to perform that task. Then identify the correct uh, psychophysical table ok. So, the correct uh, which one which table is suitable to you you select that and then you use that table to get the data. 
So for lifting and lowering task, use the height of the task. It is important. Okay. So for lifting and lowering task, use the height of the task that is from, from the floor level to knuckle height to identify the correct set of columns, right column, middle column or left column in that particular table. So once we go to the table, we will understand this. Use the width object to identify the correct set of row that is the upper, middle or lower in the table. At the intersection of the correct set of column and rows, use the vertical distance of lift that is the, uh, either lift or lower to identify the correct 5 by 8 matrix that is the upper, middle or lower. Once we go to the table, we will understand more in detail. So use the repetition rate that is one lift every 20 minute or two minutes or one lift for one minute. So whatever the repetition rate and the percentage of population to identify the correct value from the a 5 into 8 matrix 5 by 8 matrix. Okay. So this is how we are going to get the data. Three tables for maximum acceptable weight of lift for males according to the width of the ob object it is present either 75 centimeter, 49 centimeter or 34 centimeter. Now let us understand this particular uh, table. Okay. So what we supposed to do? First we need to understand what is the width of this particular table. So first is this one that floor to knuckle height. Okay. So for floor to knuckle height you can see this is the column where uh, you have set of data. This is also one set of data here also it is one set of data. Now suppose we are talking about so you have some more like elongated table so that you can do I have taken the uh, cropped portion only for 34 centimeter width okay so if it is 34 centimeter width let us understand what is the vertical distance is happening is it 76 51 or 25 so any one of it okay now among that among that suppose for this particular example i am saying that this is 76 now let us understand that what is the percent of industrial population you are expecting that uh, the work uh, that that particular population is going to work for this particular work okay so suppose you have 100 people and you are expecting 90 people will in will be involved for this lifting task you may say also you have 100 people and only 75 people are going to do this particular job. Then this particular figure need to be chosen. Fine. Now let us understand level uh, you know, floor to knuckle height and then one lift for how many? So repetition. Okay. This is for within 5 seconds, 9 seconds or 14 seconds or 1 minute, 2 minute, 30 minute, uh, 5 minute or uh, sorry 30 minute or 8 hours within 1 uh, 8 hours. Okay. So that you need to check. So once you see that so this is the column for your second, this is for your minute and this is for your hour. Okay. So knuck, uh, floor level to knuckle height knuckle height to shoulder height where you are your lifting is happening and shoulder height to arm reach. So which section you are working? Suppose you are working only for this particular section and lift uh, one lift per uh, uh, one lift for every one second sorry one minute then you, you are expecting 90 percent people is going to work for this particular work vertical distance is 76 and your width of the box is 74 then weight limit is 15 okay so 
you can see the calculation says 15. Now, you can try for some other value. Suppose this is 34 because I have the table right now over here this and the distance is 25 and you are expecting only 25 percent people are going to do this job and this this is the area where you know your workers are working and the lift one lift per is for 9 seconds. So, you are coming here then your weight limit is 28 kg ok. So, and here this ta particular table is for male you have similar table for female you have similar table for other width of the boxes ok. So, that you can get uh, from uh, original paper of Snooks table. I have taken this one just as an example. I hope it is clear how to read this table. So, it is very similar uh, table as we did in other cases JSI or you know uh, RULA or REBA. So, here only thing is number of variables are more. So, first you have to fix one then next then next and then next. So, there are so many variables right. So, accordingly you have to get the value. So, why we use this? So, before you set your industrial activity, you know what is the requirement of this particular job and accordingly you can say ok. So, if this is going to be done by these many people and this is the kind of shifting is going to happen, then I should keep my load of this much. If I need to change the load or if I need to change the uh, or increase the load amount of that particular box, then maybe I need to redesign my workstation so that it is uh, it is comfortable or it is going to uh, no, uh, going to do a best job without hampering any activity. So, maybe some some problem can happen over this particular region whereas, if you do the changes in the workplace layout or workstation height or workstation width then maybe the same thing is going to shift in this particular region or maybe to this particular region then data will also change amount of load handling also will change ok. So, for same percentage of population, same vertical height, same uh, width of the box also the total weight will change if these factors are changing or any one of the factor is changing right ok. So, what is the procedure that we are following? So, of, uh, so this we did for the um, uh, load lifting and load lowering. This is an example for male population. Similar table is available for female and for other width of the boxes. Now, let us do for pushing and pulling. How do we start? So, determine the initial force and sustained force separately. Use the horizontal distance of movement to identify the correct set of columns in the table. Use the height of the hands above the floor to identify the correct set of rows of the table we will understand as we did for lowering at the intersection of the correct set of column and rows use the repetition rate and the percentage of population to identify the correct value. So, let us take the example. So, here you can see height from floor to hand. So, either this centimeter or this or this ok anyone any anything between this. So, you may ask suppose your uh, for your case the height is 90 centimeter then what you will do? You either go with 89 that is very near value, but if you have 
and understanding if I if you want to cover maximum possible risk then you can take this as well. Now normally what we do we try to take the collar uh, like uh, the row which is nearest ok. So, if you talk about 90 this is nearest to this particular, ha, but if you see I have a value of 120 then where do you go? Are you going to come to 89 or 135? From my experience I will suggest you take the column of 135, why? Because if not 135 is like is is going to give you good data uh, correct data still there is a chance that you are uh, you know covering the maximum possible risk or you are considering maximum possible risk. So, if you do for 135 then definitely there will be no chance of injury, but if you take 89 maybe there is some percentage of chances where injury can happen ok. So, that way you should decide. Now, here you see that you know for this particular example it is taken as 75 and uh, as it is push so you know uh, 4 point, 15.2 meter push and one push in every 5 minute so the value becomes 19 so 19 kg again the data is for male population again the data is for male population so this is how the example look like ok. This is for push, push male data. Now let similar data for pulling also, similar table for pulling is also available. You can get, get the data from uh, original paper. If you do not get access, let us know in the discussion uh, you know, or chat box or something, then maybe we can also provide you the actual, uh, the original full table, ok. Now for carrying, what is the procedure? Use the distance of carry to identify the correct set of columns in table. Use the height of the hands above the floor to identify the correct set of rows in the table at the intersection of the correct sets of columns and rows use the repetition rate and the percentage pop percent for of population to identify the correct value very similar as we did for lifting lowering pulling and pushing ok. So, let us see the carry. Uh, carrying. So, here I have not given example, you can take the uh, particular uh, screenshot of uh, carrying table, maybe you can try for that particular table. So, I have not given example for carrying here. So, it is I hope it is clear that how to read the table. So, full sets, uh, sets are available with the original publication. If you do not find it, let us know. We will going to, we are going to uh, put it in the chat box, ok. Now, what are the advantages of this particular table? So, capability or uh, to realistically simulation simulate the industrial work. So, uh, based on the number of person is going to do the job, what is the workstation design, what is the type of material they are going to handle, based on all this data you can simulate the actual work uh, activity. So, capability of uh, to study very in, uh, intermittent manual handling task and very fast repetitive task that is also possible because you know you have seen uh, that uh, in 5 seconds how many repetition. So, that minute data also you can uh, see the repeat uh, you can see the simulation. Results that are consistent with the industrial engineering because most of the cases industrial engineers before setting up the uh, actual setup uh, they use this uh, snooks table to get the result or set the norms for that particular activity. 
capability to measure subjective variables like pain, uh, subjective discomfort and all those things, variables that cannot be measured objectively. Suppose I am talking about pain, you cannot understand or you cannot measure that pain sensation, right? but you can get the subjective value. So, this Snooks table can have some kind of interpretation on these aspects. Industrial application that is less costly and time consuming than most other less time consuming than any other such method. Capability of exposing uh, subjects to hazardous tasks without excessive risk. Okay, without excessive risk, you can get the work done. Simulated data you can collect it. So, this is very very useful tool and if you look at various industry, snooks table are always in use wherever the manual handling is present. So, among the industrial engineers, this tool is very popular and of course, any ergonomist can use this tool to decide that where the intervention or design changes can be done. But again, there are some disadvantages. Uh, reliance on subjective judgments from the subjects, results that may exceed recommended physiological criteria from manual handling tasks with high repetition rate, you cannot do, and apparent lack of sensi sensitivity to the bending twisting because we are not considering the posture, right? We are only talking about repetition, we are talking about the position and the width and the movement. So, this much only we are considering. We are not considering any kind of posture over here, spe specifically trunk posture or neck posture, no posture is being considered. So, that uh, it is not sensitive to the bending or twisting motion that are often associated with the onset of low back pain. So, although we are talking about the risk or uh, injury um, identification of uh, for the you know low back pain using this particular table, but it is not considering the uh, trunk twisting or trunk bending. Okay, so these are some kind of disadvantages for this tool. So if you find any difficulties, uh, maybe you have to take some more detailed method or some other method if you are expecting the bending and twisting is causal factor for the, the for this particular low back pain fine so this is all about snooks table now we will go to next um, uh, next part uh, of another uh, no instrument. It is this particular snook table is a pe pen paper method. Okay, so here also these things are available. Like as an information, it's uh, no, no maybe uh, you have tape measure, various uh, straps for pulling tasks, and it's uh, no one hour should be sufficient. To, uh, for becoming sim fam familiar with this particular table and it does not take much time to uh, get the result. Okay? So, once you un understand that particular table in detail, you can do the analysis very quickly, you can collect the data very quickly. Mm -hmm.